Hey, I'm Tracy Burns with TheStreet.com TV. Okay, earnings season is upon us again, and I've said this before, but earnings season is a lot like putting an ugly guy in a hot car. The initial presentation is dynamite, but once you open the door and you meet the driver, you sometimes tend to be disappointed. Hmm. Where's Antonio Banderas when we need him? That's because there's a lot of sugarcoating going on during earnings season. Earnings season, companies can opt to report only their sexiest numbers. So expect to see the Lamborghinis and the Lotuses leading the way, the ugly drivers in there somewhere, but he'll definitely be behind tainted windows. Now, does that mean the average investor should just ignore earnings releases altogether? Hardly. If you ignore them, then you're essentially saying you cannot trust management. And if that's true, you shouldn't have stock in your portfolio with that company to begin with. But the long-term investors should just use these releases as information updates, fully understanding the motivation behind them. Now, the biggest reason you shouldn't put too much weight on these releases is that they are not heavily policed. A company's auditors and the Securities and Exchange Commission are not required to review them before they go to print. Even worse, there are no guidelines as to what should be included in an earnings release, so companies have the freedom to include only the most appealing numbers. Granted, most of the larger companies will ask their auditors to review their press releases, some with more scrutiny than others, but you won't see a note from the auditor saying they're reviewed and they look fantastic. Mm -mm. So be skeptical. Watch for purposeful detours. If sales are down, but the company has two new products in the pipeline, don't be surprised if the release focuses on those two new pretty products. Also, be on the lookout for pro forma numbers versus the generally accepted accounting principles, or GAAP numbers, in the release. The pro formas are the numbers a company reports using its own set of assumptions. Often the pro forma numbers dif are different, read much prettier, than the GAAP numbers. A stand-up company will hold your hand and explain the differences to you. So be skeptical. I'm Tracy Burns. Stay tuned for more of the TV.